Hello everybody and welcome back to Crusader Kings where we're currently working on cleaning up a little bit of board gore. We've still got a tiny amount of that here in India. Oh, that was a little laggy to zoom in, but that's usually the case right away when I first start up the game. So it should be okay. Oh, that guy is uh, definitely true to us, so we're going to pass on that for now, of course. We've already done our kingdom claim on the Byzantines, however, this is interesting. No, I didn't think they'd go for that. <laughs> There's no way because our faith differs. However, I wouldn't be opposed. That, that was not what I wanted to do. I would not be opposed to checking to see if any of these guys have proper claims. The answer is no, they don't. Okay. I was just seeing if there was anybody that we could press the claim of on the entire Byzantine Empire. That was maybe our religion. That would be amazing if true, but no. So we've definitely got some border gore to work on cleaning up in the Scandinavia and just general European area here. It's pretty rough, there's no doubt about that. So sweet. I would not mind... That's a terrible claim. I would not mind going for a duchy claim here. I mean, that's three counties versus four counties versus one county. So we're definitely going to go for this one here. We'll go ahead and declare that. We are currently above our vassal limit, and we should probably do something about that, but that sounds like work. So we're going to raise some men-at-arms, and we will raise some levy troops as well. They have, like, 2,000 troops. This is not amazingly relevant. Okay, sounds good. This is plenty. Oh, that's right. I forgot, and I meant to not forget. As I was hitting the button to stop recording last episode, we got trebuchets. After this war, we'll deal with that. That needs to happen. It is currently auto-focusing guilds. Guilds is good, but we want windmills. Or castle baileys. We're doing fine economically. I think we're going to go for castle baileys. Okay. Sounds good to me. And these guys will arrive here in four months. We're just going to make our way up over this way so that we can get. <laughs> Not a whole lot is the answer. They're just going to immediately run away, and good for them. They're actually just going to chill at the capital. We're probably going to win this. I want to check our leadership. We'll put this guy in charge. Excellent. And we should have plenty of troops to make this happen. Yep, we're definitely going to win this battle. Are we going to stack white? But probably not because we're kind of greeting this without our men at arms. But that's okay. We'll see if we manage to stack white it or not. But I doubt it. No. However, we did capture this guy, or rather this lady's son. So that does give us a pretty good 50% air war score. We'll take it. We're also going to siege down their capital, although it's going to take us a little bit until our men arms get here. And we definitely want to upgrade. Oh, okay. This person died. Your arrangement is now void. Cool. So we're definitely going to want to get our, our siege weapons upgraded to trebuchets. That's absolutely going to be a big deal. These mangadels, they're pretty dated at this point. There's no doubt about that. So advanced bow making is being exposed. Now, does that archer bonus help out our horse archers? They're skirmisher type, so I don't actually think it does. I think that this exposure is kind of pointless for us, which is sad. However, once we get this done here, which will be in three months now, and we should probably make sure that we have a siege commander here, like this guy. Once we get that done, I think that just sieging their capital will probably be enough to end this war. At which point we can upgrade our mangonels to trebuchets, which is incredibly important. Like, words can't even express how important that upgrade is. So they retreated, but they're coming back. That's fine. It doesn't matter. We will defeat them if they come in. If they don't come in, we'll just siege. It's not a big deal. We can usurp a couple of titles. But what we really need to do is deal with that vassal limit issue. That is our biggest problem right now. And this did indeed end the war, so we'll enforce that and disband our troops. 
And naturally, we are going to hand these out. There we go. For a second, that didn't want to go. Okay. And we'll also hand this out. Fantastic. And then we'll also need to create the duchy over here, of course, which is this duchy here. Currently held by our vassal. Okay, sure. A little surprising, but we'll take that. So let's go ahead and get rid of our mangonels at this point. No more mangonels. Because we want tribuches. There we go. I will just bump these up to maximum size instantly. There we go. Perfect. That's fantastic. Ransom? No. I'm going to pass on that. So we're going to get all of our castles upgraded to the next level within the next couple of years here. But we need to wait before we go back to war at least for a little while until we have our trebuchets good to go. So we should probably think about handing out a few additional titles or consolidating titles in some way. This guy is not particularly powerful. Ah, this is the primary issue up here. Absolutely. So the Duchy of Mecklenburg, we're going to go and create that. That de jure goes to this gentleman here. Four vassals go with, and right, right away, that's so much better. Nine direct vassals above. And of course, we've also got this count over here, and... Wait, who is the actual Duke of this? This guy. We can grant vassals grateful liege. That's absolutely something that we should do. There we go. Excellent. We did apparently hand out our steward. So we'll put this guy in as our steward next. Fantastic. Now we're six direct vassals above our limit. And this appears to have gone directly into Milsenia. That's fine. We're happy about that. County of Poitiers here definitely needs to go into West Francia. There we go. Ah, that's another one that can go into West Francia. Perfect. Okay, and then there's a couple of situations over here. Feudal County Rank Realms. These are not actually ours. Okay, cool. Now we're down to only four direct vassals above our limit, so that's probably good. Emphasis on the probably. It is better, generally, to have a few powerful vassals over a lot of weak vassals in CK3. And the reason for that is because they rebel so frequently. In CK2, I preferred to have a lot of weak vassals, but in CK3, I prefer to have a lot of a, a few powerful vassals that you could have consistent blood ties with. I think that that's just generally a little bit better. We're going to take Golden Aplomb. Not that that actually helps. Because uh, our stress levels aren't too bad. And how are we doing on those trebs? We're 29 out of 80. We need more. So we'll just give that a little while for right now. That'll be okay. We definitely want to continue to clean up some territory over here and over here. We would love it if our vassal would actually attack this guy. But that's unfortunately not really a thing. However, our truce with him is actually up. We can just do a disher claim and let's do that. Yeah, we don't have our trebs, but he's a one province. We kind of don't need them. Just our men at arms should do the trick, right? Uh, 6,500. We'll raise a few levy troops. He got a holy order. 7,500. I'm a little surprised he isn't attacking us here. We're greeting this, but okay. <laughs> if he wants to let us greed, I'll be happy to, to greed. So that'll be fine. 10k. This will be plenty. We're going to move in and start slow sieging their capital, and we're going to move in our men at arms behind. As soon as everybody arrives here, we'll go defeat his army, of course while simultaneously leaving a siege force. 
We'll be heading in in just three days. Con Victor will be in charge. Excellent. So we only have 159 trebuchets here, but this should be plenty. Yeah. For now. So we'll split off our trebuchets as well as a couple of units of levies. And these guys, they're going to head up and attack. Of course, we need to put in a siege mander. And that'll be just fine. We should easily crush this. This may even be a stack wipe. And this should honestly be the war over at this point. Once the siege and the war and the battle over here finishes up, and there's a slow siege that can happen here. So without any further orders, this war should be over. Indeed, we actually captured him in battle. So that is fantastic. We'll enforce those demands and we will disband our troops, which will naturally lead to additional trebuchets. Beautiful. So that is India, at long last, cleaned up. Fantastic. Next up, of course, we're going to want to go after probably Upland. I mean, there's the petty kingdom of Upland here. This is a kingdom tier realm. He has the kingdom of Upland and the petty kingdom of Upland. Okay, that's awkward. But sure, I guess that's fine. We are four direct vassals above our limit still. And actually, is this one? No, oh, that's the Duchy of Smaland here. So we actually do want to hand that out. And we probably want to give that to like this guy. There we go. That does not need to be our direct vassal. Perfect. Our castles are starting to be constructed and that's wonderful. We can negotiate an alliance with this gentleman. And I suppose we may as well. <laughs> That'll be fine. Where is our food? What is this war? Duke of Stravani. Castle in our realm. We like it. So they're actually attacking Upland. That's fantastic. In that case, we may want to consider attacking Denmark. Or maybe just doing a multi-war on these four. That's a possibility. That's a good possibility, in fact. Yep, I think we'll do it. So we'll declare war on this guy, De Jerklin. We'll declare war on this guy. I could do a Seize De Jure County, but he has two counties. And instead, we're just going to do a Dutch Conquer. And then we're going to declare war on this gentleman, De Jerklin. And then we're going to declare war on this gentleman, De Jerklin. So we're instantly in for wars, but none of these are particularly spooky. We're going to go ahead and raise up our troops. Where's the nearest crossing over here? Right there? Okay. We're going to raise up our troops here. And actually not like that. We're going to raise up our troops like so. Excellent. And we can immediately see the Holy Order up here. That's cool. So it's got like 13k. Sounds fun. We'll raise up comparable numbers, probably to around 20k. We're not going to have any problem whatsoever with that. Four months on our men-at-arms. Okay, that's 10k there. They're actually going to walk in on us. That's very rude of them. Very rude indeed. We're just going to retreat up over here as soon as we can. I greeted it a little, to be sure. Come on, switch battle phase. There we go. Okay, so we're going to make our way up over there, and that's fine. We're going to grab our rally point, and where are we actually retreating to? Okay, sure. We're going to raise our men at arms here, which is now apparently five months, but I doubt it's actually that long. And up we go. We're not going to lose this war, to be clear. This is not a thing that is going to happen. We got a little greedy. They just walked right at us with a holy order. I wasn't anticipating that. My own fault. Completely. But we're going to walk these guys back over here. And they'll arrive there pretty shortly. And this siege is going very slowly for them. So that is magnificent. We're starting to see men trickle on in. And this will start to reinforce as well. 
Okay. So we now see about 10k troops here. We want to have about 20k, of course. And we want our men-at-arms to show up. We're basically just going to keep gathering, I feel like, until our men-at-arms show up here in another 30 days. That said, this force here is starting to get pretty large, and I don't want to raise the entire force. So we're going to stop that gathering, and 20 more days on our men-at-arms. Then we'll head in and crush these guys. Just absolutely destroy them. They attacked us before we were fully gathered. Good for them, but they don't get much out of it. So we'll group all this together. We're going to come down over to here. And we've got a much bigger force than they do. They just, they don't have a chance. They never had a chance. They were fooling themselves with this battle. <laughs> In we go. Our mediation was successful. Perfect. We do need to figure that we're going to be dying somewhat soon. We're in good health still, but we're 59. And there is a bit of a problem here. We've got like three male children here. Honestly, that's not so bad. We'll be okay on that. We're not really going to die imminently, so I'm not going to do anything about it at this exact moment. But this will be fine. Stack wipe these guys, and then we're going to leave behind trebuchets and, like, 2k units. They are then moving down into here. We're going to move in and attack them. They are not going to win this. Under any circumstances. Period. End of story. There we go. So this battle is over, and by extension, the war is over. They just don't know it yet can see how much more quickly we're sieging with the trebuchets. That is excellent. There we go. These guys are going to head up to here. Beautiful. And we will, of course, enforce man's here. He becomes Convictor's vassal. That's excellent. Somebody is trying to murder... This guy, our prisoner. We must stop the villain behind this, but also we don't really care. Excellent. So, these sieges are going so much faster now. That's excellent. Of course, it's going to be another market increase once we get bombards, but we won't have that for a bit. So we're going to crush this guy's force, no problem whatsoever. I'm going to come in here and crush this again. We're not going to siege this with this force, obviously. There's no reason to do that. We're just going to make our way up with these guys. Although we don't have a siege leader here, and we probably should. So we'll go ahead and do that. This is going to be a stack wipe, obviously. This is also going to be a stack wipe. Ah, fantastic. So this war is over. We will enforce those demands. Okay, and then these guys, they're going to walk up here and begin a slow siege, but that's fine for now. We're going to need to, of course, hit out Brunswick and Lüneburg, and so we shall. Uh, no, this is not what I want. Select this. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so there's that done, and then, of course, that, that will need to be handed off, and I think we'll give that over to East France, yeah? So we will transfer those vassals on over. There you go, buddy. Excellent. How are we doing on our vassal limit? We're still three above. That's fine. There is this kingdom title, which is slightly awkward to be sure. <laughs> With its capital way out in the middle of nowhere in another kingdom. Very strange. But that's okay. We will have this siege done in 33 days. This one actually in two months. So, this siege may actually be over by the time our siege weapons get to Hamburg. We'll see. Concentric castles are continuing to build, and we'll have those done very shortly. That is, of course, boosting our power levels pretty dramatically. And this war is over, so we will go ahead and enforce that. That becomes the vassal of East Francia, so that's perfect. We're very pleased with that. And we do need a new steward again, and it will be this gentleman. 
more concentric castles being built, and the war is over. Excellent. Gotta love de jure claims. So we got that nice and cleaned up. That's always great. Not one day too soon, our rival died. And we gained a level of stress. <laughs> Uh, we'll just go ahead and we could confide or be athletic. We're going to be athletic. That'll be fine. And that was because our brother died. Sure. Fair enough. We do have a few more concentric castles being built, but the vast majority of our concentric castles are now done. That's excellent. Just checking some situations out over here for vassals. Sounds good. Sounds absolutely great. So we would love to take over Hungary. That would be a good option. We've just got a lot of border gore, just in general, in this area. <laughs> There's just a lot of it. And that's definitely what we want to be focused on for the time being. I don't get it, but I guess it makes them happy to be old Tengri. Sure. Kind of gross. Some rulers are embracing heresy, and we should probably check to make sure our personal realm is not, in fact, Old Tangri. And we do have one that is Old Tangri. So we will go ahead and start working on converting that back. Fantastic. And we do actually have some construction that can come in over here. I'm actually surprised that with our technology, we can upgrade our hill forts. But, okay. I figured that we would have needed uh, Castle Bailey's for that, but apparently not in that exact situation, but in every other situation, we, we require Castle Bailey's. I feel like that might have been an oversight on Paradox's part. But okay. <laughs> I guess that will be fine. So, of course, we do want to continue to clean up some of this territory over here and over here. It's, it's going to be quite a while before we get all this border or good to go. We also need to consider that we are 60. And we will be dying. Fairly soon. Within the next few years. We will put this guy in as our marshal. We do have a new stewardship perk available. We'll take at any cost. Not that we'll probably ever actually use that. That'll do for now. Our sister is injured. Castle Bailey's will be 24 years. Advanced bow making 13. We're not going to live to see either of those, I don't think. So that is definitely something to be a little bit concerned about. And to that end, I do want to go ahead and... Well, this guy is our, currently, our current player heir. We didn't bother to do an education trait. This guy's 15. Boom. <laughs> and we'll also educate him at a university. Boom. This guy is going to be our heir, almost certainly. He is Hale. He is a child of concubine, but that's okay. So I think that we're going to immediately disinherit this son. He's imprisoned. But we'll do that. This son becomes our new heir. And then this son also needs to be disinherited. As does this one. That's a little expensive in terms of the renown cost. But that gives us a much cleaner succession. So we'll go ahead and do that. That'll be fine for now. Not one day too soon. Okay, so this guy is going to come of age. And when he does, we're hoping that he will be Midas touched. He should be Midas touched, in fact. Of course, we are also Midas touched. So that should put him in largely the same position as us. And the reason, of course, that we value Midas touched so much is because of the domain limit. So that is the primary goal there. We would love to have guilds for that sweet, sweet domain limit, but that's not the highest priority at this exact moment. Castle Billy's is a much, much higher priority for us. 
there's a dangerous faction against us, which actually surprises me that, there, that there's an independence faction right now. This laid into this guy's life. With the leader, look, look at the opinion of all these guys. They're really happy with us, and yet they're just like, you know what? Screw this. Okay. <laughs> oh, these guys are jerks. Anybody that we can just straight up negotiate with? I don't know. It closed. Just checking. Yep, we can just straight up negotiate with this guy. Beautiful. Anything else? So that'll pull him out of the faction and they'll lose some strength, but not actually enough. Stop closing this game. Thank you. Uh, we can negotiate with this guy as well. He's only 3.4%. And I'm sure that we're not going to have an issue here. We do have a couple of unmarried daughters, and that's not necessarily what we wanted. We wanted to look at this guy's children. Okay. He has nothing but daughters. And they all have spouses. Cool. <laughs> what about his siblings? That's unfortunate. Regardless... We can deal with this guy, and that'll be good enough. So we'll just do something like that. Beautiful. So that'll deal with this faction. No problem there. I do wish the Paradox would make it so that they're a little less likely to join these factions when their opinion is this high unmodified. Like, that's absurd. That they have plus 67 opinion, and yet they're still willing to rebel. <laughs> like, they're super happy. And they're just like, nah. This sucks. Okay, I guess they just don't like being happy. Regardless, it is time to put, to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we're going to look at cleaning up additional border gore and preparing for our next succession. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time.